So I started my first business at the age of 14, selling popcorn to my classmates. But let's not pretend that I was motivated by passion for popcorn. No, I was motivated by money. You see, one day I came home after school to read a newspaper article that told me that popcorn is sold to you and I at the cinema at a 1,300% markup. I thought I hit the jackpot. That evening, I dragged my mother to the supermarket, and we stocked up on kernels and spent all night perfecting my popcorn recipe. The next day, I got to school with my bags of popcorn, and I set up a stand right outside the canteen, where my friends would usually queue up to buy their cookies. Each cookie was priced at two pounds. My popcorn was priced at 1.99. That day, I sold out. And the next day, and the next. Before I knew it, I had to wake up hours before school just to meet the demand of my consumers. <laughs> the profit started rolling in, and I was the coolest kid in school. Until the headmistress had to call in my parents to tell me to shut shop because I was actually diminishing the canteen's profits. <laughs> I was really pleased with myself. My next business was at the age of 22. I started a health food brand called Clever Calories. We sold cakes that were low in calories, low in sugar, and contained an enzyme to speed up your metabolism. Well, most of my clients were women that were looking to lose weight, and we launched in every single Harvey Nichols store around the world. I was also pretty pleased, and I took some time off to travel. I went to Asia, I went to Africa. But I saw in villages, some people didn't have one bite of food to eat, let alone a whole cake. That's when I realized I needed more from my business. That's when I realized that business is not just about profit. Business is also about helping people. But what does this have to do with unfolding good together? Which is why we're all here today. Well, today, I use my business files at Nanoterra. Every day, I walk into my office, and I sit down to face a big pile of investment proposals for technologies. I have to sift through what to put in the yes pile, what to put in the no pile. So when I'm looking at a proposal, the first question I ask myself is, OK, will this technology help remediate the environment in some way? If the answer is yes, I look at the figures and I think, OK, but is it commercially viable for the masses? You see, there's a lot of cutting-edge technology out there, but it's just too expensive to commercialize. Well, we have countries with high GDP and low GDP. I need my technology to be afforded by every single country. Let me put it this way. If a community in Africa can't afford to deploy my technology in their country, I simply won't invest. I know it's ruthless, but I have to be to stay focused. See, old technology worked up to a point, but now that the Earth is heating up so much, we need new technology. But new technology has some negative connotations associated with it. We watch movies where villains are making some chemical formula to annihilate the universe. We hear about artificial intelligence taking over and robots ruining the world. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. There are many companies like ours that are committed to remediating environmental threats at a very little cost. So what are some of the threats that we face today? Well, we all know that the world is heating up. But did you know that when you drink water and eat food, the world has heated up? In the UK, we're so lucky to be able to turn on our tap and have access to clean drinking water. But did you know that every time you use that water, you've heated up the world? You see, dirty water has to be treated with chemicals such as chlorine. This chlorine gets filtrated into our ecosystem. Crops are sprayed with pesticides. These pesticides are toxic and carcinogenic they get infiltrated into our ecosystem. Antibiotics are pumped into animals to make them grow bigger. But these antibiotics infiltrate our water system 
we drink the water and become resistant to medicine. So when I'm sick, my own medicine doesn't work on me anymore. It has to stop. So what if I told you there was a technology that could provide sustainable food and water for you using no chemicals, no pesticides, and no bad carcinogens? Let me introduce you to my latest investment. Bubbles in liquids. So simple, but so impossible. Look at this drink, for example, which I opened this morning. I assume by now the bubbles would have evaporated and the drink would be flat. I probably wouldn't want to drink it anymore. But here in Nanoterra, we invest in a technology created by a scientist with 15 years of experience who knows how to keep bubbles inside the liquid for a very long time. We bought the technology, we trialed it for two more years in India, Africa, Japan, Italy, you name it, we did it, to prove that we can keep bubbles inside liquid. Take this glass of champagne, for example. Ordinarily, the bubbles would evaporate, but we can fit about three trillion bubbles inside this glass for ages. But besides making bubbly more bubbly, what has this got to do with the Earth? This is our machine in action, by the way. Well, look at this farmer. He looks very happy. We did our first trial with him. He owns 100,000 chickens. These chickens all drank our nanobubble water. The results were astonishing. Each chicken grew in lean muscle mass, had reduced body fat, and relied 100% less on antibiotics because they never got sick. And the beautiful part of this all is that it was done sustainably, using no chemicals. That means more chicken meat per chicken. We then tested this on crops. So we showered crops with our nanobubble water instead of regular water. And the results were outstanding. Each vegetable grew bigger, quicker and healthier. What does that mean? It means more vegetables per acre. It means more mouths fed per dollar. Look at the results yourself. There's a regular onion with regular water and a regular onion drinking our nanobubble water. In case you're wondering, we also did test this on humans. I was one of the test subjects myself. For one year, we had to drink our nanobubble water, followed by a medical examination. I myself had increased lean muscle mass, decreased fat content, and a higher metabolism. So now we offer this water to athletes to help them improve their physical state and recover quicker. This is how we work with governments to cool the country down and to allow the citizens to have access to sustainable food and water. But what about factories? There are textile factories, cement factories, food factories that are all under so much pressure to go green. Well, we found a way to incorporate our nanobubble machines into factories to reduce their carbon emissions by 40 percent. That means 40 percent less footprint, less methane, less disruption of our ozone layer. When I go in to meet business owners initially, they usually have this fear that by going green, they have to increase their overheads or something. But it's not true. With our bubbles, businesses can be more sustainable at no extra cost. I suppose now most entrepreneurs don't put so much emphasis on money. They're more concerned with making a positive impact in this world. I learned in my 20s the hard way that when I trade my values for opportunity, I always lose every single time. And now, if we trade the Earth's value for opportunity, the Earth will lose. Our habitat will lose. As an entrepreneur, I always get asked for my top tip. I only ever have one answer. Money drives you to your problems in a more expensive car. <laughs> and right now, our problem is the Earth heating up. We have to cool it down. 
I hope I've shown you today that governments and businesses can cool down the earth without costing them anything. The two events are not mutually exclusive, they're mutually inclusive. Our bubbles are committed to transforming the world food economy. They may be small, but as Greta says, no one is too small to make a difference. Thank you so much.